Do the actions of the California legislature sometimes seem like a foreign language to you? Well, you're not alone. We're going to talk about it today on The Breakdown. Kevin, once again, we're seeing where, you know, our politicians will do anything to kiss up to the governor's office. And a great example, I know in previous videos, we've talked about Assembly Bill 1594, you know, the gruesome threesome, Ting, Gibson, and Ward, the assembly members who brought this idea that when Newsom said, oh my gosh, Texas created lawsuits dealing with abortion, you know what? That makes me upset, which, you know, the governor has the right to be upset about whatever he wants to be upset about. This is America. But instead of dealing with a abortion issues with abortion issues he said oh well since texas is doing this to people on the abortion issue i'm going to come after second amendment people your your rights under the u.s constitution interesting twist and immediately teen gibson and ward say yes master we'll do your bidding and they come and now you know the senate doesn't want to be outdone by the assembly so you got Portatino and Hertzberg going, yeah, we're going to introduce seven Senate bills, 1327 and double down so we can make the governor happy. This is craziness. Well, yeah. I mean, to be more specific, um, he's going after gun owners in California by way of uh, negatively impacting the manufacturers, which is what both of these bills do. Uh, we talked about um, Assembly Bill 1594 already and um we had our skepticisms of it uh, and i still do I, I still don't know how uh you're going to create a law that identifies somebody as part of the gun owning or the the gun community i think that's how it's worded right. in the bill um but let, let's make let's make no qualms about it uh, uh similar to texas what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to shift blame onto firearms manufacturers make them liable uh, uh, for um, wrongdoing with firearms. So, you know, it's, it's not, let's stop blaming the criminals who are actually uh, carrying out uh, illegal actions and let's allow people who are, and I'll put it in quotes, suffering, um, uh, let's allow them to sue the manufacturers and, and that's going to negatively financially impact the manufacturers, which will negatively impact us. So uh, my real question here is, and, and, and I've gotten this question before, so maybe you can uh, enlighten us a little bit, Rick. Um, Assembly Bill 1594. Okay, so they're going to work to pass that. Why create Senate Bill 1327 on the other side of, um, of, of the government here? Why run these two bills parallel to each other as opposed to just focusing on one bill? I think there, there's two quick answers. One, when you see the Assembly and Senate run basically the same bill, uh, the first is a hedge that if you weren't able to get through one house, you can still get through the other house and to the governor's desk. And the governor has already, you know, virtue singled across the board multiple times, multiple conferences that if one of these or both get to his desk, he's just outright signing them. Um, it also shows that, like, if somebody was able to defeat, say, this bill in the Assembly and they thought, well, we could mount a veto of the governor, well, if it was passed in the Senate, you're already going to know that part of the government isn't going to be there. The other one is I think it's purely a fundraising tactic to do this because it's the me too. You know, I'm doing it just as well, so if you're considering giving Teen Gibson, Ward, anti-gunner political monies, you need to give it to me, Portentino, and Hertzberg as well because we're part of the team. And I think this is also, you know, as you've, you've said several times, Kevin, there's a virtue signaling going on within the greater community of Californians. And so when both the Assembly and Senate say this is wrong, it must be wrong inherently because they're both talking about it. Yet, my big beef and my question to you is like, okay, so let's say, unfortunately, these things get passed, they get signed into law. There's a lot of people out there in our community that might be like, well, okay, so the manufacturer messed up or something. Kevin, in my mind, I'm going to give two parallel examples. This would be like somebody goes out and buys a car from Tesla, and now they, they go in and they misuse it, and they drive through a farmer's market with it. Does Elon Musk get sued? No. But yet, if this bill was passed in the auto industry, that would happen. The other example would be, 
You go to your doctor, your doctor prescribes a medicine, the pharmacist screws it up, and something bad happens to your family. Does your doctor get sued or does the pharmacist get sued? The pharmacist, but under this, the doctor, the doctor's nurse, anybody was connected with that visit, open to a lawsuit, which in the end would make nobody want to provide medicine for anybody in this country. Right, which which would only leave one option, right, for the government to do it. Right. Uh, so that that's definitely a negative. And we byproduct. saw how they handled COVID. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. I, you know, I'm still curious though. So I, I mean, you and I, and to be honest, our our community at large, uh, we tend to focus on the text, right? Mm -hmm. We we tend to focus on what these individual bills are, uh, what they would do. The trend that I am just beginning to see year after year, election after election. Uh, is really just the grandstanding. I mean, how much of this is a vehement belief and how much of it is, and you know, you can, you can watch an array of podcasts um, and they will tell you that a politician's job is, is not to create law. It is to raise money. Mm -hmm. um, Follow so, the money. So where do we, but where do we fall into here? Because we have to abide by the laws of this state you know, how much of this really at, at the end of the day is, you know, Hertzberg uh, actually wanting this Senate bill to get passed and how much of it is him wanting to appeal to a base of people so that he'll get votes? I think it's both. I think um, you're accurately framing this. A lot of these people, I mean, if you look at it, uh, let's go back, you know, seven, eight years. A lot of people said there was no way that a person that had lied under 4473, who had had, you know, possibly used marijuana while going through the bar, had done all these alleged things. Now, you know, maybe not all of them were true, but the odds that all of them were untrue, not really significant. And yet, one heartbeat away from the president is our former attorney general and senator, Kamala Harris. A lot of these people now are empowered by that and think that like, hey, if I can get to the mayor's office in my town, then get to the assembly, then push something like this that has national legs on it, I too can be at the federal level. And it's a race to the top. And, you know, these people are realizing that there's people that are moving out of California. Look at the 10 freeway by the droves. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, anybody working for work, you can go to U-Haul and drive those trucks back to California so they can reuse them and make <laughs> some good money doing it. But I mean, on the serious side of this bill, we've got so many people that are fighting and all these people want to do is spread this across the country. And that's why I'm especially out right now during the political season talking to everybody saying we've got to stop it here because these people are looking at national mandates. And they're, they're test betting it. And that's why you got to ask. Bloomberg's not a Californian. Soros isn't a Californian. So why do they spend so much money in California? This is their farm team for national politics. And we've seen it time and time again. And I think probably the most prevalent example is Kamala Harris. Or, or her successor, Becerra, now yeah. is in the president's cabinet. That's or, two back-to-back -back attorney generals. Or as uh, he was previously announced, Javier Bacaria right. uh, by Joe Biden. But yeah, so... Um, and, and I'm sure that they have plenty more in, in the works coming up. And well, do you think Bonta doesn't think, Hey, the last two AGs became right. My turn. Like, yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, the, the road is definitely greased that way. Uh, so, I mean, so, but at least let's go back to the original thought here, which was these bills. Um, how is it going to affect actual Californians? Because you create this bill that allows somebody to, bring a lawsuit to a firearms manufacturer does the rest of the community actually see the the negative impact from that yeah i think here's some things that you're going to see number one these bills are not standalone they're part of a group of pieces of legislations and public policies that range from you know like we're seeing in san jose with you're going to need insurance if they can figure this out legally it, it shouldn't be able to happen but they're trying they're trying to get these up on the boards. They're trying to eliminate. So if you think about it, if they got their wish list done, no more gun shows. So you, the average gun owner, no longer have the ability to go buy ammunition, talk to people about training, look at what the new trend is, and a relaxed atmosphere with fellow friends. B, they're trying to zone out existing firearms dealerships. They're trying to heavily tax them. And now they're trying to associate with them of, oh, 
the purchase allegedly happened at this place with this manufacturer so you can be sued. A lot of those people work on a small margin of profit anyway, so they're going to say like, yeah, I'm moving out of state to where I can still have a, a you know business but not be penalized to death for it. And eventually that means, oh, you can't go to a foreign state and bring the firearm back in because California's made that illegal. You can't go to a foreign state to get the ammunition. because, And so this is the, like I said, by a thousand cuts, this is basically eliminating firearms ownership in California. That's the end goal. And for anybody in our community or outside the community not to see that, that's not hyperbole. If I can't buy ammo, Kevin, anywhere but California, and I can't buy a firearm anywhere but California, and oh, now you've removed my ability to do that from within the state. It's gone. It's gone. And then if you make it so I'm so scared to never use my firearm, then I'm like, well, why do I have these? I might as well turn them into the state. They've achieved through a thousand cuts when everybody thought what was actually going to happen in our community was there are going to be black helicopters and thugs up to your door. I'm not saying some of that hasn't happened, but this is the, the pathway that they're taking. And it's a more bold pathway. And I, I think the reason why it's a more bold pathway is because of all the firearm sales that we saw when COVID hit. They realized that, oh, you know what? People got scared and there were two things that they wanted, firearms being one of them. Well, our, our community has got, you know, I remember this experiment. I don't think they do it anymore in school because um, it, it probably wasn't good for the frogs. But I remember in high school this experiment where, you know, they put a frog inside of one of these like little tubs and they slowly turned the, the heat on and they took this other, fire, this other frog. They dropped it in very warm water. It wasn't enough to burn the frog, but it was warm enough that the frog didn't like it when it hit it. And I remember that frog practically walked on water right outside that thing. But the other one cooked to death mm -hmm. because it was a slow process. And I think what they did was they said, look with this hand, this is what we're threatening. But they've been slowly turning up the burner. And unfortunately, a lot of our people have either decided, oh, we're going to leave the country, which hasn't worked out so well, look to the places they're going. I mean, Montana was like the hottest place to go prior to COVID. And since COVID, over 100,000 people just from the Bay Area of California, not Republicans, have moved there, bought up land because they're done with the, the stuff in San Francisco. But with them, they're bringing their liberal ethics and politics, right. which means Montana is not going to be the Montana everybody thought they sold their house in California for. It's going to be like San Francisco Northeast. Well, I, I certainly don't want uh, California to cook, which is why, uh, you guys, you need to subscribe to these videos. You need to hit that notification bell. You need to get the recommendations. We need to get this information in front of as many people as possible. Uh, that's what's going to be able to help us turn around. And uh, we got to hold these uh, elected officials accountable uh, for the backwards laws that they're creating.